In this video, we're going to take a look at a practical application of um, partial pressures. It, it involves how we collect gases in the lab. So one very safe and useful technique for collecting gases in the lab is to collect the gases over water. So let's say we have a uh, reaction happening here. So suppose we threw some zinc into hydrochloric acid. That's a single displacement reaction. It'll produce some hydrogen gas. So we do that in this flask. Um, but this flask is a uh, stopper. There's a stopper on here and it's connected to um, with a glass tubing, some sort of tubing to another container here. And this container is immersed in water um, with a graduated cylinder that was filled with water. And so as the hydrogen gas is produced, it's going to displace the water in the graduated cylinder um, downwards. So basically what you have over here is going to be the gas that was produced. So we collected the gas quite literally over water. So we put in our, our zinc into our hydrochloric acid. We fill in a graduated cylinder here actually. So I'll give you the precise order. So first fill in, first fill up your graduated cylinder with water, make sure there's no air bubbles, and then you invert it so it's it's laying in a, in a tub of water so that the water is staying, the, the graduated cylinder stays completely full. Um, and what you want to do is you want to fill your beaker with the reactants. But before you do that, you need to make sure you connect um, your flask here. I said beaker by accident, your flask um, to the graduated cylinder. So you're going to uh, use um, a glass tubing, uh, insert that glass tubing under the graduated cylinder there, and make sure that the glass tubing will sit nice and snug um, in the stopper which will go into the flask. Your reaction starts to happen. A gas is produced. The gas will travel to the glass through the glass tubing, make its way into the uh, water that's in your graduated cylinder here, go to the top and displace the water that was here. So push it down. And now you're gonna replace the water with gases that you produced during your reaction. Um, and so with this method, you can collect your gas. You can figure out the volume of gas you can collected, that you collected. You could figure out um, the pressure of your gas. You could figure out the number of moles of gas there as well. Um, so using a variety of different formulas and techniques, you can figure out the number of moles of gas that you collected over the water. Um, now, to figure out the number of moles, uh, as you'll learn later, you will need to have the pressure of the gas that you collected. And so we can actually figure out the pressure by remembering that partial pressures apply here. Now, when you collect gas over water, what happens is um, you have pressure that's applied from your gas, but there's also some water vapor here as well. And water vapor also applies pressure. So your total pressure, your total atmospheric pressure is actually going to be the pre partial pressure of the gas that you produce that you are interested in and the partial pressure of water vapor. Um, and that partial pressure of water vapor depends on the temperature of the water um, that you're using to collect your gas. So how do we know that? Well, there's a little table over here you can use that tells you the partial pressure of water at some common temperatures um, that we do these experiments at. So if you're doing the temperature at, let's say, the, the uh, experiment at 15 degrees, well, your partial pressure of your water is 1.71. If you're doing the experiment at 22 degrees, well, the partial pressure of your water is 2.81. So you refer back to this table if you need to find the partial pressure of the water that you're using based on the temperature. So how does this, what does this look like? Um, so again, here's your, you'd have your tub here full of water with water in here. You have a separate vessel with a reaction happening, not drawn in here, but a reaction would be happening. Gas would be produced, gas would go through the tubing and then push the water out. And then what you have up here is your collected gas. That would be your collected gas here. And as a reaction keeps happening, you get more and more collected gas, but at the same time do understand that this is not just your collected gas, but also water vapor pressure from the water since you're collecting it over water. Um, so, what you have here is your basically your atmospheric pressure because it's open to the atmosphere this equals to your atmospheric pressure so the pressure of your gas plus your water is going to be the atmospheric pressure so as long as you know the atmospheric pressure which is your total pressure and you know the pressure of your water based on the temperatures provided in the table you could figure out the pressure of your gas and then from there with other formulas you could figure out the number of moles of gas for example so um, 
that is essentially how collecting water over gas works. The, we say the partial pressure of the dry gas. That means the gas without the water, the gas collected. That's what dry gas means there. So we'll do a sample problem, and it might make more sense after we do this sample problem together. Here we go. So we have 0 0.0640 grams of unknown gas occupies 360 milliliters when collected over water at 20 degrees and an atmospheric pressure of um, 80 kilopascals. Find the partial pressure of the unknown gas. There's a lot of distracting information here. You don't really need to care about the mass or about the volume right now. What we care about is a partial pressure of the gas. So we know that the pressure, the part, the pressure of the, uh, the total pressure, so in the atmosphere, is equal to the partial pressure of your unknown gas. So let's just call it uh, partial pressure of gas plus the partial pressure of your water at a given temperature. Now, we're told the total pressure. We're told the atmospheric pressure. So just to let you know, the total pressure is the atmospheric pressure, which is 80.00 kPa. We're not told the pressure of the water vapor, but we're told the temperature of that water, 20 degrees. So at 20 degrees, the partial pressure of water is 2.33. So partial pressure of H2O at 20 degrees Celsius is 2.33 kPa. So we can find the partial pressure of our gas by doing the partial pressure of the gas, the unknown gas, is the partial is the total pressure, so pressure of the atmosphere, minus partial pressure of the water. In other words, it's going to be 80.00 kPa minus 2.33, that's a minus there, minus 2.33 kPa, which will give us, so we have our 80 minus 2.33 to two decimal places, 77.67 kPa. So this would be the partial pressure that the gas is exerting um, in our experiment. This would be the partial, this would be in other words, the pressure of the dry gas when it's no longer over water. We've taken the partial pressure of water um, out of it. Uh, and so now we could use this pressure to solve for things like number of moles of gas that we've actually collected. And that would allow us to see, you know, our theoretical yield in our experiment to see if we collected what we expected or if we collected less. Why did we collect less? What were some reasonings behind it? You know, things like side reactions happening. We're not letting the reaction go to completion. Or maybe we let some gas escape. Or there were air bubbles. There's a variety of different reasons that we might not have reached our, our full theoretical yield. So for now in this video, make sure you understand that when we collect gases in the lab, we do it using a technique called collecting gas over water. So we displace water. Essentially, the gas is produced by a reaction. We'll go through that tube and then push water out. And then whatever's left in here is actually the gas that we've collected. So if this was, let's say, in this case, zinc plus some hydrochloric acid. So zinc was solid. We can see little solid pebbles there. Hydrochloric acid is aqueous. Um, we would get some zinc chloride produced. So that would be left over in our flask there because it's just aqueous um, dissolved ions. Plus, some H2 gas. And it's that H2 gas that will be traveling through this tube here that we'll be collecting over here. And we, we want to, and we need to realize that essentially the total pressure is the pressure of the atmosphere since this is open to the atmosphere. And that total pressure is going to be equal to the um, pressure of the gas in here that you collected. So the H2, partial pressure of H2, plus the partial pressure of um, the water uh, vapors that's in there. And that depends on the temperature, which you would get from that table there. So that would be your total pressure, pressure of your atmosphere there. And you could find the pressure of your gas that you're interested in by simply doing the pressure of the atmosphere minus the pressure of the water. And that would give you your pressure of the gas that you're interested in, that you're collecting through your experiment. The next few questions, they you can only really do these after you've done ideal gas law problems. So once we've done ideal gas law problems, then you can come back and try these questions out over here, but it will rely on your knowledge of partial pressures when collecting gases over water.